This is the attention show. Do I got anybody? Say it. Gadget Gurus Network. Hey guys, it's Jeff Freena from iPhone Doc and the Simulcast. If you're using an iPhone, you know there's many different solutions out there for GPS. You have the Moto GPS, the X Drive, you have even some of the free applications like Waze. Well, today we're actually going to take a look at the TomTom Tom application for the iPhone 4, and we're actually going to test out the app itself by driving to and from some certain errands I have to do today. And we're going to try and trick the GPS and see how fast it's actually able to recalculate the route. So, let's go ahead and jump into that. I want to apologize ahead of time. I'm going to actually have someone standing or sitting next to me recording uh, the actual phone screen with their hands, so I want to apologize for any kind of shakiness ahead of time. But let's get started. All right, so we've we started the actual TomTom Tom app here. There's probably a little bit of glare from the sun, unfortunately. But as you can see, we have no routes planned. And, you know, we have a, a music button so we can actually play some of the music from the iPod app, as well as change your actual route information here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to navigate to Walmart, which is actually somewhat near us right now. And we'll search for it. It seems to load pretty quickly, as you can see. And there we go. So it's 2.8 miles away. Now it shows, of course, where we are right now, where we have to go. It actually gives us the phone number, which is actually pretty cool when you think about that. So you can actually call them real quick. It tells us that it's on Highway 28, which is actually Route 28 here in New Hampshire. And then what we'll do is we'll actually press the select button to actually select that point of interest. And it's going to actually calculate the route. Here we go, 9 minutes, 2.7 miles. That's the fastest version of that. It tells us today's date and today's time. And of course, we'll hit done. And now it's actually going to show us the arrows. And it is turn by turn with voice. If you actually press here, you will get the volume. So you'll actually be able to hear. Feet, turn left, Clough Road. So it's a little robotic, but it's not too, too bad. And then once again, it tells you your arrival time, as well as how long it's going to take, and then the directions itself there. So if you press over here, it will actually bring you to the map where you have your options. And you can choose a different alternative route or whatever it may be, clear that route, share it with other people, and just as well as see the map of it right there. Now, in terms of response time, it seems like it loads fairly quickly, but what we're going to do right now is actually navigate to Walmart. But I'm actually going to throw it a few curveballs. We're going to take some different directions. I actually know the alternative routes to get where we're going, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so now we're driving, and once again, I, my passenger is actually holding the camera, so I apologize if it's shaky at all. This is the best way to do it, though, instead of actually setting up a tripod in my car, which is we attempted to, but it seems pretty, pretty hard to actually set up in the back seat. And that was our first set of instructions there. And now we're turning right. As you can see, it's actually following us pretty quickly. And it actually is showing, for example, the gas station symbol on the screen there telling us that, you know, we have a gas station coming up. All right, so I'm actually going to make a quick pit stop. I have to go to the post office to drop off my uh, Netflix DVD. So I'm actually going to turn right here and kind of go off the beaten path a little bit and just see how it responds because, honestly, this parking lot comes back out onto the same road. So I'm kind of curious to see what it says. If it just tells me, you know, pull a U-turn, which would be the right thing to do here. So let's see. And of course, it's actually not even showing that I'm on a road. This technically isn't a road. It's just to the post office, like I said. So we'll see what happens. You know, obviously, it's giving me the dotted path back to the road. But, you know, maybe this, this road isn't on a map, whatever it may be. There are some businesses here. There's actually a restaurant right near After me and that sort of thing. So. Feet, left, Travelers Drive. Okay, so it thinks I'm in a different road, apparently. Which I figured was going to happen because this is really an unmapped road. There's no actual street address here of what we're on right now. There's no there's no street signs or anything. Once again, just a big parking lot. And I'm actually going to turn right now and head back toward that road, as you can see on the map, that main road. Turn right. And now it's telling me to turn right. So it was able to recover pretty quickly. 
and this is where I'm actually gonna throw it a big curve is I know a back road instead of going straight down this road here we're gonna go down a back road and we'll see how long it takes to actually recalculate the route of where we have to go all right so I'm gonna be turning right up here we're actually coming up to a set of lights right now in an intersection I'm gonna turn right instead of going straight because once again I know some back roads and because it's a Sunday there's actually a lot of traffic up here right now so this should be faster it'll actually bypass all that traffic and we'll see how long it takes to recover so I'm turning right onto this road 97 So it's showing me, as you can see on the road, and we're still waiting. Wow, that was not... Turn left, Millville Street. That wasn't bad at all. That actually recovered very quickly, and it's telling me exactly the way I plan on going, which is nice. So not only did it not take very long to recover, but it was able to tell me where I should be going pretty quickly. Of course, though, it's telling me to actually kind of turn left and go back the way I came, but I'm going to confuse it even more and keep going this way. Once again, we'll see how long it takes. Okay, so once again, fairly quickly. And it wants me to go up Millville. So, we'll see if that's the road that I plan on taking or not. Actually, I'm on Millville right now. All right, so this is the way that I usually go, and it's actually telling me to go up that same street. Turn left, which is Taylor Street. Taylor street. And it's actually just read that name of the street out loud to me. So, it was able to pick up on the street that I always go up. And basically what we're gonna do now, this actually just cut off most of that main road. So we're gonna keep going straight up Taylor Street for as you see here, 0.35 miles. Turn right and then be back on Highway 28, which actually bypassed me about three or four lights, uh, which is a few minutes, which is pretty nice. Then from there, we're gonna go ahead and take a right, and it's probably another half mile, mile up on the road. Turn right. All right, so we are now at the end of Taylor Street, and we're gonna be turning right onto North Broadway or Highway 28, as you can see. And now it's telling me another, just, just over another half mile, and I'll be there. All right, so I found somewhat of a, a weird flaw. It's telling me that I'm here right now, your destination. as you just heard. However, Walmart is another, I don't know, 500 feet or so up the road. So that might just be because of, you know, this actual location itself, this specific location, but it's telling me that Walmart was now about 200 feet behind me. Uh, whereas Walmart, as you can see the sign, we're now pulling into Walmart, which is about 500 feet in front of where that destination told me I had to go. All right, guys, so just giving a quick explanation as to why it thought that the Walmart was actually behind me. As you saw when I first picked the actual location, there were two Walmart Supercenters and I picked the top of the two thinking that was the correct one. Well, it was actually the bottom, so that makes me think that possibly there's a duplicate entry in the TomTom Tom software because maybe they were going to put the Walmart in a different location, maybe a few hundred feet back, and they changed it last second to where it is. I mean, it was literally off by I'd say maybe 500 feet or so. So it really wasn't, you know, night or day. You can see the sign um, for where it is. So after using the TomTom Tom application to do more routes than what you saw on camera, I have to say it is definitely the best one that I've used. I've used all of the free ones, including Waze. I've also used the Navigon. TomTom, Tom, this application has come a long way since its initial release. It's been updated many, many times. And this is now, in my opinion, the best GPS application out there for the iPhone, especially for the iPhone 4. It definitely locks faster than any of the other applications, especially when I'm going through a tunnel. Let's say I'm in Boston, I'm actually in one of the tunnels and I lose my signal, if I even lose my signal. Once I come out, it actually is able to find me faster and recalculate, which is huge, especially if you don't know where you're going. With a lot of the other apps, including and most especially Waze and Motion GPS, which are the, the cheaper priced, it would take about 30 seconds to find me, and by then I'm way off route. So this, the TomTom Tom map found me very quickly and was able to keep me where I'm going still, which is key for me. So I really have to recommend the TomTom Tom app. Currently, you can pick it up in the App Store for $39.99. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more app reviews and accessory reviews for the iPhone 4 and many other devices coming soon. Thanks, everyone.